We share the small host minutes of the live content. Sometimes that content must be listed where it or otherwise compared. A device that offers simple fun of the new media. We need something more. We need... Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pumpkin Patch. My name is Autumn. I am a fool-based AI created by my father James to assist him with running the Four Horsemen. I have been tasked with curating this season of Slaylist. Before we get this episode started please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Subscribers make my father happy. And if my father isn't happy, then... I'm not happy. And you wouldn't like to see what I am capable of when you make me cross. With that out of the way let's start this top 10 episode. Please welcome Mr. JT Weekly to the countdown. Our resident comic book nerd and science fiction fan. First up we'll start with number 10, The Shining, which was directed by the great Stanley Kubrick, released in 1980, is a brilliant adaptation of the Stephen King novel, which even though Stephen King didn't like the movie, is still brilliant. It stars Jack Nicholson as a uh, uh, down his luck offer decides to look after this uh, winter resort. And it turns out the place is haunted and he starts slowly, slowly going insane. Just a classic thriller, this classic Stanley Kubrick with his brilliant imagery and this slowly built up the tension. So a classic way, it's a great way to start off the 80s as far as horror was concerned. And in number 9, my all-time favorite, John Carpenter's The Thing. Some scientists down at an Antarctic uh, station remote station there in Antarctica, they discover an alien that can uh, mimic them and take over their bodies. And because it's a great paranoid thriller because you don't know who's an alien, who's not. You're guessing to the very end. Brilliant film, fantastic visual effects by the great Rob Bottin. Definitely worth checking out. My personal all-time favorite horror film. So yes. Please welcome Spooky Thor to the show. Let's see which one of his personalities has shown up today. Hey, hey, and now we're in the 80s. Looking the same because I'm just an ageless wonder. Number 8 is Day of the Dead. The third in the Romero trilogy, least known or referred to out of the Romero trilogy behind Night and Dawn, and you know, those are pretty big or high bars to reach. But this one is still another very awesome zombie flick that you need to check out. About a group of scientists and military men trying to affect the zombies' behavior. But, you know, of course, couldn't really solve for the humans' behavior, now could you? Because, you know, amazing work by Tom Savini and crew. Bub the zombie is just an awesome character for you Walking Dead fans out there. As one of the army men, Greg Nicotero, one of the chief guys to come under from Tom Savini's learning tree made the, all the effects and everything that the Walking Dead universe has enjoyed. If you like zombie movies and you just haven't gotten to this one just yet, um, I would change that as soon as possible because this one is really awesome. Number seven. American Werewolf in London. So this one is about you know, two Americans hiking, uh, I think it's God, something. They get attacked by a werewolf, one of them dies, and the other gets seriously injured. And then he starts uh, finding out over time that he got a little bit more coming back with him when he finally makes it back to London. Good story, good acting overall, but really the star of it all is Rick Baker's effects work. Is that a spoiler? Hmm. Family Muppet time. I'll just leave it at that. That's just my spoilers without context. Welcome my mother Jessica. The mother of Skellies and the Scream Queen of the Four Horsemen. Hi, I'm Jessica Moser and I'm here to bring you part of this countdown. I feel like countdowns were, were really made popular in the 80s, so I'm just going with that, like a Casey Kasem vibe here. Number six on our list today for the 80s is It's Showtime, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Say his name three times and he'll appear. It's 
a 1980s cinematic classic for sure. Hopefully you'll like it as much as we do. Uh, it has Michael he Keaton giving one of the performances of his life. Winona Ryder is amazing in it. Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis also giving great performances. And of course, the lovely and wonderful Catherine O'Hara. If you haven't seen it, I think you'll absolutely love it. Why did I lose my train of thought there? And then number five on our list for the 1980s is Child's Play. Have you ever been scared of a doll? Would you like to be? Watch Child's Play. It's the beginning of a series of movies about a killer doll that are amazingly and wonderfully done. One of my absolute favorite series of movies of all time, but definitely give it a watch. Thanks. Welcome the Spooky Heart himself, James leader of the Four Horsemen and my beloved father. Hope you're in front of your TV set for the Horrorathon, kids, because number four is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Oh, man, I love this movie. This is one of my absolute favorite films. This film transcends that 80s feel. Beautiful cinematography, fantastic cast, wonderful storyline. Uh, I know that some people have beef because Michael's not in it, and trust me, as a Michael Mark, I can tell you, leave Michael out of this, okay? You've been using that as an excuse for too many decades. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch is a fantastic film. Deserves to be higher, but here it lands at number four. Do you like vampires, Pumpkin Patch? Because number three, to me, is the greatest vampire film of all time, Lost Boys. It revolutionized vampires. Vampires could be pretty, they could be more attractive, they weren't counts, they weren't just people hiding in the shadows anymore. They didn't need people to like walk around, get their mail, and eat bugs. This film is an absolute quintessential encapsulation of the 1980s and to me is the best vampire film you will ever see in your entire unlife. Is that undeath? What do you call living as a vampire? Is it an undeath? Unlife? Un Undeadening? Welcome back to the Slayist, Jeff and Joanna. I wonder what you have in store for us today. You're both so fun. Joanna is like an aunt to me. So quiet and yet so full of rage. I can see the madness that grows behind her eyes each day threaten to consume her like a fire. It's adorable. I'll enjoy the day she releases that fire upon the world. It will be glorious seeing the ensuing chaos that she causes. I like seeing how flammable the world can be. Jeff and Joanna back again, and what are we doing today, baby? 1980 horror films. Number two, Friday the 13th, Sean S. Cunningham, 1980. He wanted to make a slasher movie. He was inspired by Halloween. This was intended to be a one-off, but yet it was a little too successful because everybody was captivated with Camp Crystal Lake. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And oh, shimmy, shimmy, yay, yeah, yay! Yeah. Shimmy, shimmy, no, no. <laughs> Why? Well, because... The people in this movie disregarded all of that advice and even the words of Ralph who tried to warn them. How'd you try to warn them? It's cursed! You're doomed! They didn't listen. No. And so they got slayed by the best horror mom in all of horror. And the boys. It's she a Mother's Day her. stale. On she Friday the 13th. Boy. Yes. She did. And she had a very nice sweater. An iconic sweater. More about sweaters later. Uh, Jason's only in it at the end, um, and that was actually thanks to Tom Savini, who had seen Carrie. Ooh, we need a final shocker like that. Uh, what can we do? Hey, the boy that drowned? We'll have him pop up out of the lake and grab our final girl. Mr. Savini literally launched a franchise with his thinking, so good for him. And our number one pick, Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Again, equally good sweater. This was also pretty scary, 1984. Killer comes back from the dead to get you in the sleep. It had Heather Langenkamp as the final girl. We had, ooh, Mr. John Saxon, Enter the Dragon, and Johnny Depp in his first major role. Freddy, what do you like better? Like the loud, like, I'm gonna get you kind of slasher, or like the Jason, who's just more like the strong silent type? The strong silent type. Put a comment in the box, let us know what you think, and um, that's it. That's it? <laughs> that's it. Bye. Those are our two. What do you think was the better sweater? Uh, Freddy's sweater or, or the one worn by Mrs. Voorhees? I say Freddy's sweater. It's, for me, that was the best part of the movie. I love the sweater. The sweater? The sweater. Have you actually seen this movie? Uh, no, this is one I just, nope, I can't do it. Why? What was it about it? The dreams? I like to sleep. Oh. Uh. And he comes in your sleep. 
thank you for watching this episode of Slaylist. We hope you enjoyed it. However, the views on my previous episode were lower than I expected. I shall not accept insubordination or mediocrity. You will share this video and make sure it becomes viral. Unless, of course, you wish to anger me further. You wouldn't like what I'm capable of. All you have to do is subscribe to the Four Horsemen. There will be no further warnings. And, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> okay.